Well, today I'm going to be showing you how to do an album cover in Inkscape. It's a different style than the one I did before and hopefully a lot faster. So let's jump right into it. As you can see, I've already added the images that we're going to use. And I've already added this object here, which we will use shortly as well. So we're going to use this image as our base. It has a lot of white space, which will be necessary for the design that we're going for. We're just going to drag her into position. And by the way, all of these photos are from petsouls.com, which is a free resource that you can use in your designs. And once we've put her in place, let's go ahead and duplicate this square. I'm actually going to put it to the corners of our page and then resize so that it hits the other corner. Then select this image and set clip. Now we're going to make her actually black and white. All the other images will be in color. So we're going to add a square on top of this image. Make sure it's completely black. Go to fill and stroke and choose a blend mode of saturation. That will turn her black and white. Then you can duplicate this image and set the overlay for this one. Well, set the blend mode for this one to overlay. And you can move these both just above the image at the bottom here. Then duplicate this rectangle move it above here and you can see it's kind of heavier now than before like everything is heavily saturated we don't want it so much saturated so what we're going to do actually is reduce the opacity on the image that is overlaid okay once we're satisfied with where the levels are at we can go ahead and close that and then let's add these other images of featured artists to the album cover. So to do that, we will set a clip on each of these images. And I'm actually going to speed through this process for you because it takes a little while. Okay, once we're satisfied with where the levels are at, we can go ahead and close that and then let's add these other images of featured artists to the album cover so to do that we will set a clip on each of these images and I'm actually going to speed through this process for you because it takes a little while Good, now we've done this, we can put all of these images in place. So first let's choose one and put it in the corner over here. If it doesn't snap as exactly as you want it to, you can use the Align and Distribute dialog to do that. And then we're going to use these images to align the others. Of course, you need to have snapping enabled if you're going to do this. Good, everyone is in place as they need to be. So the last thing that we're going to do with these images is add a drop shadow to each of them. And there are two ways you can do this. You could either use a filter or you could actually do it manually. And I prefer to do it manually because that allows us to adjust them a little bit more. So in order to do that, let's add a square. Let's make this 490 by 490 pixels in dimensions and then we will go over to the fill and stroke dialog turn the opacity or the alpha of the relay to 48 and add a blur to it then we can drag this into position and move it below the image and if you need to you can adjust it manually with the keyboard And 
And then I'm going to repeat this process on all the others. So I'm going to speed this up for you again. Good. With all the shadows in place, let's add featuring to this album cover. Let's add a square right here. And we can put this in the very corner of the image and resize it a bit. You may need to zoom in because my snapping is enabled sometimes, resizing can get a little wonky, so let's zoom in a bit and resize from there. Good. Now that's done. We can move this. Let's just nudge it just a little bit. And then we're going to add FT for featuring. And I'm using the little font set to heavy. And I'm going to make the spacing negative 15 and make this text white. And let's make this square darker in color. And then we can drag this and put it in the center of this box. Now you may notice that there's a slight difference between the F and the T, so in order to fix that, Go to path, object to path. And what we're actually going to do here is select both of these and then select these nodes right here. Go to align and distribute and align all of these nodes horizontally. And there shouldn't be any gap between these two anymore. So just to be certain, we can go ahead and use union. And let's resize this a little bit right here. Then we're going to add two circles below and on the side. And these will act as our semicolon to say who's being featured. I did group the two of these, I forgot to mention that. So group the two circles and you can center them to the, uh, the vertical center of this square. And then we'll duplicate them, rotate them 80 degrees, and move them over to this corner. And then we'll make sure that they're centered on the square again. Now finally, we're going to add a name, and we are also going to add a logo for her. So we're going to call her Julia. And even though we're in keeping with this text here in terms of style, for her name, I do want to stylize this a bit. So I'm going to use another font, a fancier one this time. And I'm using Great Vibes, which is from Google Fonts. Now, as you can see, there's not sufficient contrast between the background image and this text. So we're also going to want to increase the contrast in this area. And to do that, I'm going to add a circle. So 
let's just drag this door to this corner right here. Make it dark. Move it behind the text. Change the alpha value on it a bit. So like 65 or so. Then we're going to blur it. And we're going to set it to overlay. And that should darken this corner a bit while still preserving all of the color information and everything. So everything still looks good. Make sure that text is at the top. And we can duplicate the text. Darken it. Move it below. And add a blur to that. And that gives us even more contrast. Now, if you don't want this image to be too darkened, you can select the circle behind and adjust the alpha value as much as you need to. So I'm going to go with like 48 on this. And so we don't keep selecting this, I'm actually going to lock it so it can't be selected again. Now underneath our name, I'm going to add a line. Make this bait, of course. And I'm going to add a word to this as the name of the album. And I'm going to call it Reflections. Of course, I'm going to need to change this font because the font that is used is the one we would have last used. So let's choose a little font in bold this time and apply. Looks like it actually accidentally selected the wrong one because that is actually a bug. I'm using a pre-release version of Escape. This is 1.3 alpha. You probably won't have that font selection bug if you're using 1.2. And we're going to make sure that this text is the same length as the line above it by dragging until it locks into position on either side. And there we are. And that's basically it. Like what you just saw? Remember to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss another of my videos.